Hello dear students, now I am going to explain a very important chapter of physics that is gravitation. This is chapter 3 of your textbook. It is said that an apple fell on Newton when he was sitting under an apple tree. Once he noticed this one, he started thinking why apple moved towards earth. And ultimately he concluded that there must be a force between earth and the apple because of which apple moved towards earth and ultimately he termed this one as force of gravitation he said whenever two objects are there anywhere in the universe anywhere in the universe it's not that only on the earth surface this is true there is a force of attraction between the objects and that force between the objects is termed as force of gravitation in simple terms i can say the mutual force of attraction between any two bodies is called force of gravitation. I hope this one is clear what is force of gravitation. That means whenever, whenever you take any two objects, suppose I have taken this pen and another pen, between these two pens there is a force of attraction. Here some of you are confused, sir said there is a force of attraction between these two pens, then why they are not attracted towards each other. It is because the force of attraction between these two pens is so less, so small, the force is not sufficient so that the pen will move towards each other. Clear? So I hope you have understood what is force of gravitation. Now suppose you take, suppose here you can see one anti is standing here and a stone is here and this is tied with a thread. Now this stone is, she is moving in a circular path. She is applying the force along this side, along this direction. From this is the stone, this is her hand, and this is the direction in which she is applying the force. And this force is called centripetal force. That means whenever any object is moving in a circular path, the force between the object and your hand, and the center here you can say because this is circle, so this point is the center. This force which is towards the center is termed as centripetal force. Now suppose this anti is tired now and she is not applying this force. What will happen? As soon as this force is stopped, then the stone flies off along the tangent. Along the tangent means stone will flow or it will move in this direction and it will go and it will strike someone's head. Clear? So, the force which is between the stone and the center, this force is called centripetal force. Based on many experiments, he ultimately gave one law which is called law of gravitation. Now, according to the law, he said that every body in the universe attracts every other body with a force which is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their centers. This law is very important. Let me explain Newton's law of gravitation. Suppose you are having two objects. This is one object. Suppose it is capital M and another one is small m. And distance between them is d. Now according to Newton's law, he said that there is a force of attraction. He said whenever any two objects are there, there is a force of attraction. So between this one and this object, there must be a force and he said that this force is directly proportional to product of their masses. So that means more the mass, more will be the force. Clear? And he again said this is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. Since the distance is d, it will be 1 by d square because it is given force is inversely proportional to square of the distance. Since it is inversely, it will be 1 by d square. Fine. So if I combine these two, I am going to get F proportional to M M by d square. If I replace this proportional symbol by equal sign, I have to bring one constant. And this G is called the constant of proportionality. It is also commonly called universal gravitational constant. Fine. And it is found that the value of this constant value of capital G it is not dependent on masses of the object distance between the object what type of medium is in between so it is always a constant 
whatever may be the material, whatever may be the mass, whatever may be the distance, value of G is not going to change. Fine. Now, if we just cross multiply, I am going to get F D square equals to G M M. Clear? So, what we will get for G? Capital G equals to F D square by capital M small m. Clear? So, what we have done? From the Newton's law of gravitation, we know force is proportional to the product of the masses, mass of first object and the mass of second object. It is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. So, if I combine, I am going to get this. If I replace this proportional sign by equal, I am going to get one constant which is called the constant of proportionality, also called universal gravitational constant. Cross multiplication, we got this. Now, what is the assignment of force? Assignment of force is Newton. SI unit of distance is meter square and here mass SI unit is kg kg here also kg so it will be kg square so SI unit of capital G will be Newton meter square by kg square fine now if I consider one object of mass 1 kg another object of mass 1 kg and distance between them suppose it is 1 meter then what I am going to get G equals to F into 1 square by 1 into 1. We have taken this one to be 1, this one to be 1, this one to be 1. So I am going to get G equal to F into 1 square, 1 into 1. That means G equals to F. From this I can define universal gravitational constant as the force of attraction between two objects of unit masses mass of this one is 1 kg this one also 1 kg and they are separated by unit distance that is 1 meter clear then we can say the force of attraction between these two is equal to universal gravitational constant it is experimentally found that value of capital G is 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11 Newton meter square by kg square clear so this value is constant everywhere if you go to Saturn if you go to Jupiter if you go to Sun anywhere in the universe value of capital G is not going to change it will remain constant clear in SI system this is the value and in CGS system in CGS system the value of capital G is 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 8 is 9 centimeter square by gram square. Clear? Kepler, he gave three laws regarding planetary motion. Let me discuss now Kepler's laws. According to the Kepler's law, number one, that if you consider the movement of any planet suppose this is sun the orbit of a planet is an ellipse with sun at one of the foci because in case of an ellipse there are two focus here one focus here another focus so out of these two you have to consider any one as the position of sun clear second one is line joining planet suppose c is the position of planet and o is the position of sun line joining the planet and the sun sweeps out equal areas in equal intervals of time suppose we consider c is the position of any planet at any instant after suppose one hour it has moved here then this is the area that it has covered similarly from a to b when it moves in one hour then whatever area it will cover here and whatever area is covered here these two areas will be same third law of Kepler is that cube of the mean distance of the planet from the sun that means if you take the average of these distances from the sun it will be proportional to the square of its orbital time orbital time means the time in which it can it can cover this elliptical path clear so I can say r cube by t square is constant these are the three laws of Kepler the Newton's law of gravitation is also called universal law. Why it is called so? Because this, since this law is applicable everywhere in the universe, that's why this is called universal law. Again, as you have seen here, that force is proportional to 1 by d square. 
since f is proportional to 1 by d square so we can say it is inversely proportional so sometimes it is also known as inverse square law 